Hey guys and welcome back to Twitch Plays Kerbal Space Program Career Mode Playthrough. Twitch Tech Industries has a bit of a problem. We are hella low on science and I really need to get our tech level up so we can start doing some of the more fun things that are available in this game. I mean we are having great fun going to the moon and Mimus and being ready for uh, Juna and Eve but there are many new features that I have still not got my teeth into and the ones in particular are definitely the ore finding, mining and such forth. So I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to make use of something else that I don't use very often that is of course the administration building and its various strategies contained within I am interested in outsourced R&D limited to the 25% commitment rate because of how um, low level my administration building is I'm a little bit sad about that I'm also a little bit sad that I can only take one one strategy else I would be trading reputation for science as well because look we're, we're really near the top of the bar but we make a lot of money from almost every mission we take on so I feel like we're, we're okay to spend a little bit of money from our contracts on our side. Speaking of contracts, we have quite a few interesting outstanding ones, but the ones in particular that are catching my eye today, other than that fly by the sun of course, is all the scientific data from around Minmus. There, there are quite a few of those, and I reckon if we got the right vehicle out to there, we could probably get it all done in one hit, and then it'll be just like a glorious mission of multitasking. So I mentioned a vehicle of multitasking excellence and here it is! I'm calling it the scientific chariot because, you know, why not? And uh, I maybe just overdid the multitasking bit, or at least the description of it. About the only thing it can actually do is go around in very complicated orbits, touch down on the surface of Minmus and do some science. And, you know, I suppose that's three things, that's nearly multitasking, but, you know... There are a few things we've done differently here. One of them is the absolute behemoth of the uh, lifting stage underneath here. I don't normally build so big, but the scientific chariot is indeed very big itself, so we need quite a lifting stage to get it up. And the other thing that we've done different is we have sent Bob Kerman up onto this mission. Whilst Jeb and Bill were mucking around on the moon trying to get the uh, tourist destination set up, Bill was spending a lot of time training for this particular mission. Spending time walking around with springs on his shoes, maybe jumping up and down on waterbeds, definitely spending some time in the not quite neutral buoyancy at tank. The whole time thumbing through his old copy of the Big Book of Science to make sure that he was fully prepared for this almighty mammoth spectacular mission that is coming up. As we hit the top of our launching arc and finish off our circularization, I'd like to take a moment to talk about the actual vehicle itself and what's on there, or rather, all the staging that leads up to the actual vehicle itself. So you can see the orange tanks on the bottom there. They were, of course, with the skipper engines responsible for getting us up into a circular orbit. And you can see those two tanks on the side, or at least you could from that beautiful top-down uh, view. Uh, we will get back to talking about that when we see there. Right now, what we're trying to do is push up our Apple apps all the way up to Minmus and try and get ourselves a nice sort of equatorially aligned relative to Minmus approach, which um, is not that easy. I I've got to tell you this, it's not that easy, especially when you're using a, a pair of skippers because they are mahoosive. Of course, nothing compared to the main cells, and that is why we needed six, eight, eight of them, in fact, to lift this vehicle off the floor far enough to get us into orbit. With our Minmus encounter set up, it's time to start mucking around with, uh, like, our inclination or maybe our radial burns, just trying to get ourselves onto that all-important in, what, six degrees inclined plane? I believe six degrees is the inclination of Minmus. Uh, out in the distance there, you can see the debris that is, of course, our orange tanks. We got quite a way out towards Minmus before we dumped them, or at least our Apple Apps did before we dumped them, and that, of course, means they're coming along for the ride mere hundreds of kilometres away from our actual approach. Uh, so here we are at our inclination nose, and this, of course, means we are at the perfect opportunity to set up a... Um, equatorial encounter with Minmus. It's always a bit weird trying to think about how to word this because obviously when I talk about equatorial alignment I'm, I'm generally talking about Kerbin but obviously every planetary body has an equator so this is the one we're trying to aim for and our predicted orbit here is starting to get really close to having a periapsis grazing the very surface of Minmus indeed right there I have one at 12 kilometers. 12 kilometers is very low of course 5.7 is the lowest you can go whilst being completely safe of any Mo uh, mountains, sorry, that happen to be on Minmus. But now we're having a look around and trying to figure out how we are going to pass by all these different nodes, take the science that needs to be done, because obviously, now you guys can't read this on the contract here, but only two sites 
do I need to be on the surface? All the others, I need to be either above or below certain altitudes. So I'm thinking I can do the vast majority of this without actually touching the floor. I'm going for a polar approach of Minmus for the same reason that you'll put a communication satellite or at least a scanning satellite in a polar orbit around the planet because you get to see every single bit of it if you just wait for long enough. I'm actually a little bit proud that I managed to set that up before I'd actually managed to uh, enter the Minmus sphere of influence because normally I have to wait until this point, the highest point on my uh, trip around Minmus to make these final little adjustments here. But I'd actually managed, as I say, to get the halfway point and from there I had like the best control to be able to put myself over the top of the thing. Now what we're trying to do here is try and get down as low as possible but also intersect some of these um, contract sites. One of the problems with designing ground vehicles is you don't really pay attention to how it's going to perform in space or at least I don't because I don't think that many moves ahead. I am not a ch uh, chess grandmaster which occasionally means you end up doing silly things like putting solar panels just on top of a vehicle so that when it's going through space it can uh, actually run out of electricity Thankfully, Bob Kerman is an expert in the EVA pack, as are all my Kerbals, uh, so he could just literally push down on the side of the craft, and because there's no power, there's no SAS holding it in the right direction, so it can spin round and take the burn that it needs to take to get its, its periaps down low and intersecting with those sites that I keep going on about. The approach to the surface itself was a bit of a staggered affair. I kept on time warping forwards, checking my trajectory. If it looked like I was going to miss that contract site on the top there, I'd then uh, do a little radial burn, not a radial burn, sorry, an inclination burn there, and time warp my way forwards a little bit more. Keep doing that progressively. I knew, I know I got like progressively less efficient as I got closer to the surface, but this is like some of the payoff you have to, to do when you're like not quite so good at far away precision. Though saying that, I did manage to hit the North Pole of Minmus from like the, half the Kerbin system away. So yeah, maybe I could have done a little bit better than this, but here we are. We are coming down nice and low now. It's time to start thinking about how low we are actually going to come down and how high we need to be. Uh, so I'm going to start checking my contracts and seeing, well, just how far we need to be down. To be able to get this crew report for the purple markers here, I need to be able to get down underneath 6 kilometers. It was 6.3 kilometers, so as long as I'm below 6 kilometers, I should be more than uh, adequately low to be able to get this. Due to the positioning of my periaps, I can tell that I'm going to have to do the science before we actually get down there. So, there we go, science done, crew report got, big green tick on my uh, my mission statement there. The next thing is how are we going to circularize our orbit? Because we could just put ourselves into a circular orbit, get nice and low over the planet and then start thinking about where we want to be. But obviously, if we could possibly get it so as we're circularizing, we end up passing one of the other targets, that would be, I don't know, about a billion times better than just doing it in a round circle. One of the things that I had noticed at this point was that I'd been on the dark side of the planet for a little bit of time now, so I wanted to make sure that my electric charge wasn't going to run out, make sure that my lights were off, things like that, so we could just keep the batteries running for as long as possible. Now, my circularization burn was quite good, wasn't quite as good as it could have been. We could have had a perfect nailed shot on that first go, but we have this tiny little uh, little tweak to do here, and I think that's kind of okay. I mean, that, to me, that's, that's close enough to go, yeah, yeah, I, I kind of know what I'm doing here. It, it looks all right. We set up a, a manoeuvre note where it needs to be and then I was like wait a bit if we get a bit further back along our uh, trajectory we'll actually use less delta v than, than this particular node so I dragged it along gave it a little bit of a tweak set ourselves up made sure my solar panels were pointed towards the sun and I think that taking into account the spin of the planet should be more than enough uh, well should be good enough for us to pass directly overhead it was then just a matter of drifting around the orbit trying to follow these valleys really because my perennial worry here was that maybe I'd gone a little bit too low whilst trying to line myself up for the like the, the appropriate altitude for the temperature scans or anything like that and that I was going to smash into one of these mountains. So if I kept to valleys and things like that or at least close to valleys I thought that I would be relatively safe. So with the mandated science collected I then have to pick a point on my trajectory where I think I can start making like some planning maneuver nodes and be finished doing all the planning before my vessel drifts past that past that particular point in space. Um, not overly difficult, you just have to point, pick somewhere sort of 5-10 minutes ahead of you and even then that might be a little bit too far ahead. Of course what we are trying to do is make our adjustments as early in our trajectory as possible because this saves us a lot of delta V. Speaking of Delta V, I think this next manoeuvre was probably one of the most expensive portions of this uh, whole entire mission, aside from obviously trying to get out of the gravity well of Kerbin. 
every time that I made a manoeuvre, I was trying to look for some way of looping from one to the other. But unfortunately, due to the sort of the semi-random distribution of these markers all over the planet, I couldn't actually find a way of swinging past one and then past another whilst having a good setup for like a third with a minimum delta uh, a, a minimum inclination change so I just kind of had to go do this in an also semi random way just going around find find the right point now you will see down there this target called Emerald Sands and even those of you who have been following this the entire way through will not know what that is that is for the very simple reason that I have not included its mission in any of my videos up until this point uh, it was just a standard build an outpost on this place for us please type mission there was an a, a a hitchhiker's can, another command capsule on top. It was just a nice standard touchdown. So boring that I didn't really think I needed to bother you guys with it. The unfortunate thing is that I did actually have some footage of the landing and the craft itself to show you. But I have obviously been overzealous in my hard drive cleanup process at some point and managed to get rid of it all. Which actually really saddens me. The, the fact that there is a completely undocumented part of this process uh, yeah, doesn't sit well with me at all. Anyway, cock-ups in the running of my channel aside, we seem to be doing okay in this mission. In fact, we have only one more site that needs a flyby and then everything else is going to need landing. And it is, of course, the one in the middle that we need to fly by. It would be nice if it was just one on the edge and then we could, like, do a little jump jump to get the other two. But no, no, no. It has to be this way, of course, doesn't it? Once again, we're following the valley hugging technique and it turns out this time we really did need to use it. Uh, the altitude we need to be to capture this temperature scan is underneath 3,600 meters. That is 3.6 kilometers. And if you remember, most of the mountains on Minmus are over five kilometers or between four and a half and five and a half kilometers. But there we are. We are, we've now grabbed that last bit of science. We need to start thinking about how we are going to touch down. I feel like we should go for the single one first. It might be the biggest deviation, but hey, we have the Delta V to spare. If you have a look on my, my little HUD up the top left there, we have over 4,000, uh, over four kilometers of Delta V left, which is, if I remember enough, to get to Juna, maybe? And even though that I do have this massive Delta V surplus, I am wondering what would be the best way to uh, get to this particular one, because it is almost 90 degrees around the planet from me. Uh, and where would be the best place to do it? Like, do we want to stay in the Southern Hemisphere? Do I want to uh, make my inclination change at the equator? Yeah, I, I literally do not know. So I'm, I'm taking some time to press some buttons when I'm out and about, just see which way is the most efficient. But it turns out that, well, we're just going to go with my first impulse because that, that really is the thing that we need to do. With the maneuver node set, the planning done, and all the head scratching behind us, we're just going to make whatever burn we feel is necessary. I've set this maneuver node and we are going to use that, but for some reason, my nav ball switched over to target mode. And I don't remember actually setting it to target anything at all. So I'm not sure why it did this and it completely threw me off when I was doing the actual burn. But we're starting to push down towards it and we're going to follow this line of valleys. You can see there's sort of a, a high point to the south and a high point just a little bit more to the north. Um, because we're coming in for a landing. Finally, I've decided that maybe with skimming this close over the top of all the biomes, it might be worth trying to gather some additional science. Uh, the plan that I had in my head and the reason that I didn't actually think about it at any point was that I could drive around the surface of Minma, see all the sites. But that would have been slow, that would have been boring. In fact, the little bit of driving that I did do on Minmus was incredibly slow and boring and we will skip over that. Just, you know... Those of you in the comments, they'll be like, oh, why weren't you doing science more often? That was why. That, w that was why I wasn't doing science more often. So, for some reason, I decided that I wanted to set a maneuver node to make sure that we were lining up for this particular landing zone. But there was absolutely no need. I, I was getting quite close and I could have done it by eye but it's always nice to have some sort of numerical representation especially that green bar on the side and there on the floor you can see exactly how low we are we're like we might be four kilometers from the mean sea level of Minmus which of course is the level of the flats but these mountains these mountains are high these mountains are very high and with the ground encroaching upon my orbital path, it's time to start thinking about actually putting down for a touchdown. Uh, if we start bleeding off a little bit of speed here, you'll see that our camera switches around. That just shows us how close to a landing we are. Now, I'm starting to look around, seeing what our... Um our landing sites like more importantly trying to look for features that tell me where the uh, science mission is now I, I had a look we're going over this hill but in front of those two hills over there that's nice and easy we, we can set that up but I'm also gonna wait 
mainly so that I can make sure that I don't stop too far short of the of the site and then have to roll uphill because uphill rolling very inefficient we want to roll downhill really so here we go we're coming down our speed is already very very low so just a, a small burn on these two lv909s on the side is more than enough to bring our speed down to a, sm a, a cruel an absolute cruel on the surface of minmus and we're just bringing down vertically we, we've all seen this before i'm quite adept at this sort of landing especially on minmus and now we're just going to roll down this hill a little way because well we need to find that science zone and it was definitely back the way we came somewhere Making a quick jump cut, just forward a little bit because, you know, I spent far too long rolling down this hill. And here we go. Now, one of the main things now that I've got all the science, uh, all the mandated science bits, the bits for my contract, is that I wanted to do lots of other sciences on the way. So I've changed my HUD display up on the top left there to show me what biome I'm in. And... What I should have done here was gone back to the, the Kerbal Space Center, had a look in the R&D building, see what ones I actually needed. But no, I thought what I was going to do is if, as long as I'm driving from one side of the planet to the other, or at least from the bottom half to the top half, I might as well go along, test all the, the biomes that are in the way. And whilst I could have quite easily just done loads of like crew reports or maybe EVA reports or something like that to see if I needed the science or not, uh, it was much easier if I just did my biome list and then stopped every time I got to a new biome and saw what was going on there. Now, this is the point of the fl of the mission that got quite tedious. I believe that I was on the floor and driving for something like half an hour. No, wait. It's half an hour of footage here, so it's going to be two hours of driving around. Which we could do in excruciating detail, but I don't think we're going to. I'm going to just, like, show you the highlights. The first highlight, of course, is getting rid of these decouplers that the more observant of you would have noticed have been stuck on my ship for a very long time. For some reason, I stuck them on upside down, which means that when I did the decoupling, they got put on the other way and then, yeah, and then got stuck on my ship. Uh, the next highlight is spotting the flats over there. You'll see that we just have flats in front of us and then the one just over the hill is the lesser flats. That's important. Remember that there's two here. So we're coming to a stop on the flats and it's gonna we're going to get some science here. Uh, as always, the brakes on these vehicles aren't really good enough to be stopping us in these low gravity environments. Every time they try and bite into the floor, you kind of get kicked up a little bit. And yeah, it just kind of steals any braking power away from you. But here we are on the flats getting all the science that we possibly can. We've already done the science, the uh, science bay, the materials bay. That's the one I was looking for, the goo canister. Getting a beauty shot. We've done some... Um, surface samples things like that uh, we then rolled over the hill and did exactly the same thing on this side where the lesser flats are located uh one of the things that we had to do here was get out get our crew report out of like the little capsule that it's kept in so that we could do another crew report for the lesser flats i'm not sure why i didn't just actually just send it off because crew reports are one of the few things that you can actually transmit back via your communicatron and not take any sort of transmission penalty uh, and it was this point i decided that all the biomes between here and my target up top as you can see there are just going to be the same ones that i've already gone over so we fired up all our rockets and we started making our way into a suborbital trajectory to get us up there it was relatively simple as always firing your engines on minmus like has a massive effect on where you're going but here we go we're on to the dark side we are very close to where we need to be in fact we uh, just a little bit overshot, but that's okay. We can deal with that. Trying to bring myself down nice and gently, but more importantly, on my wheels so that we don't like smash up our engines or more importantly still smash up the probe core that I put on the back of this vehicle. For some reason, I didn't think that I would be landing on the back of this vehicle, but if you guys ever tried to like land one of these car type vessels on its wheels when you're coming from a suborbital trajectory, it's not easy. It's not easy at all. So I said I overshot and taking a quick look at the map view, we can see that, yes, indeed, I need to go a little bit further south. Adding on these um, navigation markers are really useful, though. So I'll start heading towards that. Uh, we're going at quite a clip, as you can tell here. Uh, so much so that we actually overshot where we were supposed to be going. So we come around, we stop, and I was like, hang about. Instead of taking the vessel back, maybe the better idea would be to get Bob out and do a little bit of a jetpack EVA run. Uh, this is something that I'm getting quite quite good at now. I, I really do enjoy the jetpack. It's one of my favourite things. Particularly when you get to like crash into the floor far too fast and do little acrobatics and things like this. You may have noticed that it's becoming quite a running theme of mine. But 
If anything proves that the female form is bouncier than the male, at least as far as the Kerbals are concerned, it would be this. If Valentina had fallen over and done that, she would have gone all the way to the floor of the valley. So, yeah, I don't know what that proves, and I don't know what my point really is, apart from if you're going to, like, take people outside, it looks like, like, the males are the better ones to take. Strange, really. So with the one surface sample collected, we've got to go and get two others in this area, as you can see from the map view here. But this vehicle stabilisation runs off electricity, so I thought the thing we might do is sit here, watch a beautiful sunrise, and it was actually a real beautiful sunrise. And now that we've got um, a direction marker on here, I thought we'd bounce our round way around and try and find it. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually show up on the internal view nav ball, as you're seeing here. So we had to do that from the external view. My, my plan was to do this all internally from this point onwards, but no the game wouldn't let me so we not, weren't going to do that and now it's just a slow roll down this way I'm not sure how far we have to go and with the memory of the overshoot of the last one still fresh in my mind I'm like right well we're going to take it easy we're not going to go over sort of 15 meters per second and as you, as you can see we are like fully on the brakes right now Try, trying to like handbrake turn our way down you can see I'm going sideways going backwards nothing really actually seems to slow me down any quicker so we just got to wait wait it out but there we go we get Bob out we get our surface sample and we need to make our way to the other one thankfully due to the power of editing magic you don't actually have to sit and watch the entire thing my plan here was to actually just jump out and grab a crew report maybe jump off and surface sample and let the vehicle roll to a stop on its own as the brakes are on unfortunately I kind of got wedged as soon as Bill got out he got kind of shunted off the ladder as you can see that the vehicle is rocking quite a bit uh, but thankfully the vehicle does have a, pope, a probe core on it. A probe core on it. So we can do things that I know help slow my vehicle down quite considerably. Things like pulling a wheelie because that makes sure that the back wheels are constantly in contact with the ground. And we're going to watch Bob absolutely losing his nut about being stuck on this vehicle and not being able to do anything about it. But there we go. He j fell through a little bit of a, a part clipping issue there but that, that's all right that's fine uh, and now all we need to do is get the science and start thinking about how we're going to send this guy home now it turns out one of the major things that i forgot to do for this vessel was think about how it was actually going to return to kerbin uh whilst if this has more than enough delta v to just take off and make its way back down to low kerbin orbit there are absolutely zero parachutes on this vehicle now this leaves me with only a couple of options. I can either take this back to low curb in orbit, fly someone up, get them to put down some parachutes or transfer Bob across and bring the science back. Or I could leave this science chariot on Minmus with the Emerald Sands, as that was where all the tourists would be coming to, and have it as a general sort of day trip out vehicle for anyone that's like so inclined to come and get some science from Minmus and that is the one I went with so we're going to go park this with the Emerald Sands but before we make a jump cut straight over there I want to show you my favorite bit of, the, bit of this whole journey the entire mission all the way around Minmus or even coming from Kerbin my trajectory here didn't quite make it over the top of this mountain as you can see from that map view there there was a definite broken bit in that line so I've, made, I've put myself parallel to the floor here, trying to get a good view that makes me feel like that I am looking parallel. And there we go, we are bouncing off the ground at hundreds of meters per second, which is not something that normally happens on Minmus, and I'm, I'm quite proud of how that went. It, like, we could have ended up with a lot of death on our hands here, but no, first time, got it right. Brilliant. Then all remains is to uh, push my trajectory into a sharp left-hand turn to put us over towards, I believe that's the Great Flats, but we'll find out when we land. And finally, make touchdown and roll towards the Emerald Sands. Of course, I make that sound incredibly easy, but as we are coming in for landing, I noticed that like my outside fuel tanks, and that is the ones with the bigger engines, have finally run out of fuel, which is, you know, good fuel efficiency. I was expecting those to run out on our way to Minmus, or in fact, even on the landing at Minmus, but no, we kept them going the entire way through the mission. And then begin one of the most long and boring landing processes available in the entire game. Minmus, of course, with its ultra-low gravity, means that you do fall down incredibly slow. The only one that I believe you are slower on is Gilly, the moon of Eve. Uh, one thing that I have noticed, or one thing that I was going to notice as soon as this happened, is as I was getting down to the floor, for some reason it switched me into targeting mode on my nav ball. So whilst I was travelling at zero speed relative to my target, which should be the same as landing on the surface, right? Because it's on the surface. But oh no, for some reason it gives us uh, orbital speeds at that point, uh, which meant I was traveling at something like 15 meters per second relative to the floor, which again, really, really confuses me because surely the Emerald Sands being landed on Minmus should be traveling at the same speed as the surface. I, I don't know 
how that actually gets worked out. If anybody can enlighten me on that particular process, I really would actually genuinely like to know because it's something that, that intrigues me. Obviously, I play this game quite a lot. It obviously interests me. So we're rolling towards the Emerald Sands at quite a clip. I have sped this up since the landing process because, you know, this is just uh, rolling around and falling in very, very low gravity. So I think we can deal with an extra speed boost here. But yes, here we go. We're coming in close enough for Emerald Sands. So those of you who wanted to know what it looks like, this is the part to do it. Unfortunately, I am coming in at once again quite a clip. You would have thought I would have learned going around Minmus quite as often as I did that this is not the way to approach stuff. But oh no. No, I'm going to go flying past. So here's your quick view. Yeah, we'll get a better view of that in a bit. But let's talk about the stopping process. I'm going to start putting almost all my bases towards a hill or something like that. I mean, it's nice landing on the on the flats because you get a nice flat landing zone and stuff like that. And your, your base won't turn over. But... I would like to have a hill so that I can like roll up that instead of rolling back. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, guys. This time you're going to actually be able to see what the Emerald Sands looks like. And I will see you next time when we're going to start moving Taurus up here. Just so we can have a vehicle to actually bring Bob back in. But anyway, I will see you then when we're going to do that. Bye! Maybe I should have talked for just a little bit longer. I want you guys to be able to actually see the, uh, the Emerald Sands over here. So I'm just going to let this play out. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.